Hey guys, I just caught a huge pike. I'm in Woodland Caribou Provincial Park. Find out how I'm gonna deep fry this pike in Ringolos. Hey guys, it's cold, it's raining, it's wet. <gasps> you always see my breath out here. It's days like this, I don't mind being indoors playing a video game. You guys know, to bang out this content, I need to thank my sponsors. I'd like to introduce to you a game a browser-based strategy game called Throne Kingdom at War. I was immediately caught by the gameplay. It might seem risky to stylize the game in an old-fashioned way, but it worked out just fine. You guys check it out for yourselves. Historic castles, endless battles, fighting over resources, and robbing caravans, but in a modern interpretation with cool graphics and other social features. Guys, if you're sick of running those old strategy games over and over and over again, give this one a try. Use the links in the description below, download it, you're gonna get one day VIP status as a kickstart. Use the links below, give the game a try. Jared convinced me to catch dirty pike. Hmm. So that's what we're eating for breakfast, the dirty pike. Got no leader on. There we go. Oh, jumper. I let him jump. That was a free jump. Just doesn't want to go in the net. That's weird. <laughs> Why does the fish want to go in the net for? He heard you talking about breakfast. Yeah, I'm running out of time on this line without the leader. Alright, let's see if we can do it this time. There, there he is. There's a big dirty pike for breakfast, Jeremy. Woo! <laughs> We're eating fish. Finally. Yeah. I say finally because we've been working hard for this laker. Just contemplating how to cook this pike. <laughs> <laughs> Whether we're going to use it. Oh no. No. It broke off. Oh. It broke off. Shoot. Dude. I blame you the pike. You should have put new line on there. <laughs> A whole new thing. Oh, I did break off a foot of it to do the pike. Dang it. All right, so we give pike a pretty bad name on this trip anyway, but we did eat 17 pike in a week before and they're pretty good. Five days, <laughs> I think. Yeah, something like five days. Yeah. So I'm gonna grab my Ringolos and that's gonna be our, uh, I don't know, what do you call it? Batter. Our batter, yeah. So while I'm crushing Ringolos, Jeremy's gonna show you guys how to do the five boneless fillets. If you're coming up here and you wanna eat pike, you should definitely learn how to do it properly. Otherwise, you won't wanna eat pike because you'll have a ton of Y bones in there. Mm -hmm. Does that look like enough? Um, yep. Yeah? I think so. All right. So there's our Ringolos. If you don't know what Ringolos look like, that's what Ringolos look like. And get rid of that. Uh, we have a paddle to uh, work as a base. You can obviously do it on the rocks or anywhere you want. We're just out of the wind now for purpose of audio. Yeah. All right. Cool. So you're set to go, I think. Yeah. Do you want to just show our hands? Because yeah. right now people can't see the pipe. Sure. It's actually not in the frame. Okay, I'll move the camera. <laughs> All right. All right. I might have to crush these by hand. These are Get harder. a rock. Get a rock, man. Harder than I thought. So first things first, if you want to eat the skin of the pike, then you need to scale it. Uh, we're not gonna eat the skin, so we're not gonna scale it. We're going to take fillets off of the skin. So you want to find where the bony part of the head ends and cut down and a little bit backwards. Oh, I'm still too far. There we are, right there. Cut along the spine and just follow it. You'll feel it. They're pretty big spine bones. And you're going to cut as far as this back fin before you intercept those bones there. This is a slimy pike. This is the trickiest cut here because now there's a line of bones right down the center of the meat. So what you want to do is cut a line in the meat on either side of that line of bones. 
and along the other side. Okay, so the bones are in this middle piece. You do lose some meat there. Take that meat off. And there's your boneless back fillet, and you just make sure you take out that bony piece in the middle. So you always end your back fillet before the fin bones here, but you don't start your next fillet here. You go back a little bit. I kind of start a little bit past the start of this fin, cut straight down to the spine, and then cut flat along the spine bones. It helps to have a good fingernail to grip the skin to do this. On the back of the pike you can see the spine bones and you can see the edge of the Y bones along here and a line of them along here. Cut inwards at an angle you're going to bypass all of those bones. Let's get a line cut down the side here too. So along along the skin and at an angle. This is this is the hardest part here. This one takes practice. So you get the least amount of bones and waste the least amount of meat. See that cut there now? The tip of my knife is running along the ribs. I didn't take the guts out so there they are exposed. Wow, we are going to open up this pike stomach because it is stuffed. And I definitely want to know what's in there. Get a grip on the skin and take off our boneless, skinless, finless fillet. So here's the stomach and it is chock full. A lot of the time I catch pike and they're empty. This is not the case. Do you have any guesses what's in here? Minnows. Minnows? I think you're wrong, only because I felt it, and it's crunchy. Crayfish? I'm thinking it's full of crayfish. Oh yeah. Look at that, we'd have a little crayfish boil. <laughs> crayfish, all crayfish, crayfish. They haven't even been in there very long. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five. That's a lot of crayfish. Uh, there's our Ringolo pike and we have a side of Wadobo rice. We have no seasoning really for the rice. Oh, we didn't even have butter left for it. <laughs> no. My mouth is watering for the Ringolo pike though. Yeah, it smelled really good. You didn't even try a piece yet? No, I haven't. Wow, okay. It's super crispy, like real good crispy too. Cheers. Yeah, cheers. Ringolo pike, the only thing we can manage to catch. Yeah, the Ringolos. I'm not sure I can tell it's Ooh. Ringolos. Can you? Hot. Mm. I like the Ringolo flavor mostly baked out of it. What's well, crispy Maybe though? Maybe it's just a potato batter now. <laughs> Maybe. That's good. It doesn't taste like Ringolo. No. At all. Weird. Just like potato. Yeah, I thought for sure we'd pick up, at least hold on some of the spice. This would be good on a sandwich, actually. Mm-hmm. Fish sandwich? Fish burger. Yeah. So, um, we're in uh, Woodland Caribou from Mitchell Park. I think I mentioned that before a few times probably in this video. It's easy to catch fish here. Kind of goofing around. It's hard to catch lake trout out of this lake right now. In the wind especially. The wind is killing us. Absolutely killing us. Mm -hmm. 
we know there's a nice hole there. That's where I got had that lake trout on and lost it. Mm. And um, I caught one there the other day. Yeah, Jared caught one trolling on her first day. Her very first day. Yeah, first day. And yeah, we'll figure it, we'll figure out where the holes are and then we'll try to stay on them. But it's like it's fight, it's like arm wrestling constantly. The wind, so tricky. But there are lots of lake trout in here. Yeah. It's hard to jig and paddle at the same time. <laughs> yeah, and you gotta set the hook right away. <clears throat> so you don't have the line, you know, the, the rod in your hand. You don't know if you got a bite. Because the, those lake trout are gonna grab those jigs, but then they're gonna let go right away. Mm -hmm. So if you're not feeling the line all the time, and we did a little bit of like the paddling with the one hand and the jigging with the one hand. Pretty cool little beach here. Yeah, it's, uh, it's like a good swimming spot. Tucked out of the way. No wind. You see any caribou prints in the tracks yet? Well, there were definitely tracks out in the sand, in the water. A little look, eh? Go for a stroll on the beach. So that's one of the things we haven't found yet is a caribou. We've seen uh, some tracks here and there, but not a caribou yet. Let's check out this beach. Pretty neat spot. Not a lot of people probably visit this side. The drop-offs over back this way. But uh, if you have a family, you want to bring them up here, you could for sure take them for a swim. This is a really good spot for a swim. I think we're at the Portage to another lake here, uh, Aegean. And that has lake trout in it as well. And I think it's a pretty short portage. So these depressions here, very hard to tell, could be caribou tracks, but super old. Depression here, depression there, depression there. So that could be a caribou track, but definitely not fresh. I'm not sure if you could tell how quiet it is out here. Basically just here, Jeremy eating his breakfast and my feet hitting the sand super peaceful out here so if you're looking for solitude and you're trying to get out of the city all the city noises this would be the place to go and take your time explore kind of what today's all about, relaxing, taking our time, exploring. No place to be in particular. Just have a peek around. Quite, quite right, but oh, Bob, these bunch bears are very not sweet. Well, it's a really mild flavor, eh? but you can eat them, and you can pick them really, really quickly. show you guys a little bit about um, fishing tackle and rods you guys should bring if you're going on a fishing trip uh, especially to woodland caribou um, I'll start with the rods I've got a this is a I guess it's a sport triumph fishing I don't even know where they got this rod from but it's um what does it say medium light power seven foot fast action four to ten pound test so this is my this is my creek fishing rod that I normally use it's uh, very sensitive I think I have six pound test on, line on here with a Sahara Shimano rod, uh, reel, and I've got mono. I always use mono. 
uh, I have never switched to braided. I don't. I find there's no reason to go braided. I do really appreciate the sensitivity and the action of the mono. My second rod is the Saint Croix Premium. It's a uh, seven foot medium power, fast action, but this is for six to 12 pound test line. There are some really big fish in Woodland Caribou. There was a 26 pound lake trout caught, uh, 42, 46 inch pike. Those are some massive fish. So when I fish for lake trout, I use this one. I have it rigged up with 10 pound test line. Uh, that's as high as I would go. Fluger uh, Supreme Reel. This is a better reel with a better drag than the um, Sahara. The Sahara I do like. Uh, I would recommend both, either one. But this is a better uh, reel. So that's my rod. You're probably more interested in tackle. So for tackle, I pretty much had Harlan put this together for me. I showed him what I had. I dumped it all out on the counter and I said, what am I missing? So we use a little live bait when we go fishing. I have, um, I got some twister tails, four inch double tail, Mr. Twister, natural design, all that stuff. That you're going to rig up onto your jigs. So you're gonna get a bunch of different colored jigs. I find the best uh, that's working here is the white. I find it stands out. Um, some of the water here are pretty tea stained. So I've tried the black. I didn't catch anything uh, on the black, I don't think. So I went back to the white, but you will play around with things and see what works for you. You should also bring some Rapalas with you. The Rapalas will work for lake trout. Uh, if they're up shallow in the spring, we've also caught them now in July, midsummer, on the wraps, but these will work for walleye too. So far, I've only used the Rapala, the jig for walleye, and a big 3 8 inch uh, heavy, heavy jig head with the white twister tail for lake trout. That's it. And finally, um, a net. And that's completely optional. You can easily handle the walleye without a net. The lake trout, you can handle without a net. Play them out. Uh, before you get to the boat, tire them out and then you should be able to pick them up. If you're going to try to go after big 42 inch pike, bring a net. If you're going to try to land giant lake trout, bring a net. And if you want to make sure you're eating fish, bring a net. Because you have the potential always to lose fish at the boat. Hope that gives you a good idea of what you should bring to Woodland Caribou. And uh, we're just about to start our day. The wind's picking up, so we may get a lake trout fish in before the wind picks up too much. We got an overcast day today, but as always, we're gonna make the most of it. If you guys want to book a trip to Woodland Caribou, give Harlan a call. Let him know you watched this video because he wants to know, obviously, that sponsoring us to come out here is worthwhile to his business. Have you missed anything? You know this is Jeremy, One Wild Crafter. You can subscribe to him. You should subscribe to him. He cares, I don't care. You can subscribe to me, I don't care. Uh, well, we're on day seven? Yeah. Day seven of nine. So we got a whole day tomorrow. We might do an adventure or we might just sleep. <laughs> we'll see. But we always say we're gonna take breaks and then we don't. We don't. We can take a break when we get home. Mm -hmm. That's my philosophy. Hmm. It's not as expensive to take a break at home, watch a movie, sit on the couch, but here there's an opportunity that I don't get at home yeah. in my regular day life. So I am definitely going to take advantage of it. Um, I think that's it. There's a whole series of videos, obviously, you can go back and check those out. And if you watch till the end, what's the word I said last time? If you watched all the way to the end, you can write... Full stop. Full stop. So I know you watched the whole thing. <laughs>